I'm really honored to be here today representing Asheblast, my family company, and Confindustria Young Entrepreneurs, my second family, which I serve as a national vice president for the international affairs. Allow me also to offer a special thanks to President Emma Marcegaglia for having invited me to this very important debate, together with the maximum representatives of the European economic and political scenario. Celebrating the Business Europe Day, I've asked myself what could be my contribution to this special event in front of such a great audience. And well, I thought that my experience of doing business in and out from Europe, the world, keeping the perspective of a Southern Italian manufacturing SMEs would have been valuable, especially if combined with the experience in the Association of Young Entrepreneurs. So please follow me over the extraordinary, ordinary journey of a manufacturing company founded in 1995 by my father, starting from a very simple and unsexy invention, a special round welding machine for polyethylene film. Sharing with you the journey we did through quality, innovation, and global vision that indeed enabled us to scale up, leveraging on positive EU business environment. So, welcome in Echeplast. Here you can see myself, with my father in the middle, and my two younger brothers, surrounded by our co-workers. So, uh, a family company, uh, based uh, in Troia, which is a small town in the province of Foggia, in the Apulia region, southeast of Italy. What do we do? Well, Echeplast was founded to manufacture liner bags for container, a special polyethylene film-based industrial packaging which is used to safely ship bulk commodities in sea box containers. Later, we have implemented a production line for special paper sacks for the automotive spare parts, mainly car bumpers. And lastly, we have introduced a new uh, product line, the thermoprotectors, for sensible goods being shipped overseas. So, with our products range, we are serving some of the most relevant sectors in the European economy. Chemical specialties and commodities producers, such as I don't know, Versalis, BSF, Dow, Basel, these big companies, as well food and beverage for warders, industrial waste disposal, and automotive industry. Of course, uh, working mainly, mainly with these global companies, in their international trading with container shipments, globalization has been always among our driver for growth. And we were constantly exposed to globalization. Basically, we are operating in a global niche market. Just a few figures. We are nowadays serving 38 countries uh, uh, through seven international offices and branches and representatives, India, UAE, Turkey, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, USA. 80% of the turnover is in fact generated abroad, but with a special, uh, with a special uh, thing. We are the only remaining producer of liner bags in the European Union. Where we are? We are located, uh, located in the earth of the Mediterranean Sea, so unfortunately not exactly in the center of the business earth of the, of the European community. We are in Troia, province of Foggia, northern part of Apulia region, the hill of the boot. Wonderful location for uh, best olive oil, red wine, tomatoes, pasta. Relevant for seaside holidays, if you like, but believe me, not a primary industry and business destination. As a matter of fact, our region is still classified as Area Objective 1 under the EU cohesion policy, and as you can see, we are surrounded by olive trees. So, how it comes? What was our journey? Indeed, it, I said it was a, a very extraordinary, ordina ordinary journey for a small manufacturing company. If you think, just for example, all the contradictions of being based uh, at the periphery of Europe, 2,000 kilometers away from Brussels, facing and competing with Far East low-cost producers, while having the cost and constraints of a modern Western country. We did it. 
well, as I said, we started in 1995 from a very simple technical invention, our first round welding machine, and we never stopped. You can see here a, a very a picture of the pioneers of 1995. Uh, that was the machine on the, on the left side, you can see it's a, it looks like a very simple thing. It is. It was patented by my father, invented and patented. That was the first bench of pioneers with strong values in terms of dedication to the company. And as I said, this journey never stopped. Challenging ourselves on constantly improving the technology through process engineering and automation, to stay competitive on costs, to increase quality and reliability of our products. Our journey was nothing more than a constant and deep dive into innovation. Developing always new technical solutions to improve competitiveness, achieving several international patents on product and machinery, researching alternative, more sustainable raw materials to reduce the impact of our packaging materials, developing and processing also new model of cooperation, sharing even with our competitors, new safety standard that we have developed for the industry. Of course, all this proactive cycle led us to grow. But growing in a mature, even stagnant market, like Italy in the end of 90s, even if in the early stage was a very profitable business, would have killed us in diaper, especially when Europe, European market was flooded by the first wave of cheap products coming from China immediately after, the, after they entered the WTO in 2000. Luckily, my father at that time felt immediately the urgency of developing at least as true European player, and that was our salvation. Europe must be our minimum common ground and horizon. Indeed, if this is definitely true for business, it remains valid even when we talk about politics. In many ways, Europe is the minimum size to compete, and it's all about competing, even when a previous speaker were talking about values. If we don't succeed, even our values will not succeed. So we have to compete. And competing globally means growing. And growing like we did, even step by step, what uh, at a considerable ra uh, ratio for a small company like we are, required also to keep investing in new buildings, machineries, organization, people. And of course, we benefited from European funds whenever possible, so that uh, in the last 10 years, above six millions of Euro investments, two were coming from European, from European funds. Appreciating a, a financial support that can really play a crucial role in increasing competitiveness of companies and territories, which for historical, geographical, or social reasons are still far from compete their path, complete their path to modernization. Among the investments we did, the one in human capital training and empowerment was possibly the best we did. In fact, with our incremental level of automation and in an environment poor of industry, we were forced to keep training and educating our workers. Demonstrating also that introducing incremental level of automation, improving productivities and companies' competitiveness guarantees a longer trajectory of growth and more qualified and stable and paid jobs. It wasn't easy, but we made it, and we proved that it is still possible to run a competitive manufacturing industry in Europe. What is needed? We have to prepare and support people to the huge change that has just began which is not just technical education, it's not, it's not just IT education, it's a more broad approach to self-empowerment, to self-employment. Failing, succeeding in this, sorry, will make Europe even more competitive and still relevant to the world. Failing is simply an option that we cannot afford. 
Declining sustainability as the sustainable development goal from UN, it's also for a packaging company, it's very, it's very important. I, I believe in general for business, it's very important. And we did it uh, through, sorry, there was a, a missed in the, in the slide, but okay. Um, through the, um, yeah. uh, sustainability, as I said, we did it developing packaging who are more uh, uh, projected since the beginning in their entire cycle of life, considering the reduction that we bring to our customers in changing their packaging to a better, more sustainable way. We are doing our job in making a better world, even producing packaging, which gives one message that doesn't matter which business you are in, but if you're doing it responsibly, you are contributing to a better world. And business association, we are here today. When I was mentioning that uh, we need to prepare to, to train, to educate our people, I'm including also entrepreneurs. I'm including also business community. We are not immune. Personally, I can refer again to my experience, saying that joining the Young Entrepreneurs of Confindustria was one of the best decisions I ever take in my life. In fact, I started to expose myself and indirectly my company to such a twist, a tornado of positive emotions, facts, figures, thoughts, networks, that have completely reshaped my view. Opening to an even more international approach, growing the ambition of, be, of being global entrepreneurs, of becoming global entrepreneurs with strong European roots. And this is happening every year when I'm attending the G20 Young Entrepreneurs Alliance Summit. This year will be in Buenos Aires, which brings together hundreds of the world's most brilliant entrepreneurs from all over the world to catalyze global change, focusing on education, scale-ups, and SME's growth, and promoting international mobility. It happened also at the European level with Yes for Europe, the European Confederation of Young Entrepreneurs, that since 1988 is aiming at ensuring that young entrepreneurs lead the economic, industrial, and social, and social renaissance of new European Union, more resilient, digitalized and integrated. And if you don't know, Emma Marcegaglia was president, former president of Yes for Europe, because being former pre president of Business Europe. So, which is the missing tile of the puzzle that I was trying to build today with you? It is my personal convincement that we, as business community, have to take more and more the responsibility of working closely with our political representatives to build a greater political and economic European integration. We need more Europe, but asking and hoping is not enough. Europe needs us to witness the great benefit of having more EU, spreading positive examples of what is possible and which are the benefits for the entire society. They call it storytelling. I think in the business we, we know what we're talking about. By the way, Confindustria, great, great did it just a few days ago in Verona, uh, bringing together 8,000 entrepreneurs joining from all over Italy to elaborate an economic policy document addressed to all the political forces which are going to run for the election in just two weeks. And as I said, bringing industry and competitiveness as a crucial player for social inclusion at the center of the European project could possibly reactivate the positive debate and the attitude around the entire European project. I wish we can come back to the time when I was still at the elementary school and I remember we were studying you know, the Second World War and the history of the first half of the 20th century and we were horrified. We were shocked, and immediately after, we were fascinated and conquered by the European dream. We were just about to enter Schengen. It was, it was an era where Europe was perceived as a, the most positive things going to happen. A continent of freedom and rights, 
opportunities and respect, where young people are protagonists and where they can work and build their own future as European citizens. We have to work to revitalize the dream of the European Union. Thank you very much.